Croiso, a very warm welcome to you all here in the chapel and online. Here we are at the year 13 Leavers service. And to begin our service this evening, I'm going to ask Ella Smith, who is Deputy Head Girl and Head Chorister, to come up and sing to us the school song. Thank you, Ella. Thank you very much, Ella. And a formal welcome here to you. We're here to celebrate, not the fact that you're leaving, but to celebrate all that you have gained by being here. And this evening, I'm going to begin with a very short story from the Bible. This is from the New Testament. And this is where Jesus sends out the 72 disciples. And I'm going to explain how I think this fits with you as you're being sent out from Landovery College. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs, in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace, be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. 
and remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the labourer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Now, how does that story apply to young men and women who are about to be sent out from Landovery College? Well, first of all, I'm not Jesus and you're not my disciples. Okay, so, but what you are is you are people who have been in the college for a number of years. I think the longest person who's probably been here is going to blush if I mention her name. However, you have all benefited from your time, however short or long. You have been taught, you have been looked after, you have enjoyed camaraderie, friendship, an identity, and now you're being told that it's the time for you to go out. And you don't go out needing to take lots of things. Jesus' disciples were told not to take a bag or a knapsack or their sandals, but to go. And when you find a place that welcomes you, that receives you, then stay there. And I want to encourage you to do the same. When you go from here, go out and find a place where you can be welcomed and fit into a community and take with you the qualities that you have gained through being here in Landovery College. Be ambassadors of the good news, the good news of Landovery College, where you have learnt to respect one another, to be tolerant of differences, to show compassion, and so many more things, more than I have time to say. But be proud of what you have got, of who you are. Do not try to be somebody you are not, but be yourself. Be confident, knowing that you have received so much in your time here. And you know, there will be places where you go and you just think, no, this isn't the right place for me. So keep going. And when you find the right place, you'll know. You'll know in your heart that that's where you're meant to be. And that's where you're meant to give as much as you can to those around you. Jesus told his disciples to go and heal the sick. Whatever you do, wherever it is, remember all that you are can be a blessing to other people. And I hope that you will remember some of the hymns we used to sing in here, both in prep school and in senior school. I hope that you will remember some of the things that have been shared. I hope you will remember some of you coming up to light an, a candle on the altar. And in the future, wherever you go, always remember that you can call upon that sense of peace. There's always a place of refuge in the storm for each and every one of you. I will pray for you and bless you later, but for now, I think that's enough. And so I'm going to invite Head of School Alfie Gallagher to come up and speak with us. Hello everyone. So, welcome to the people on Zoom. My name is Alfie Gallagher and I'm the head boy here at Thandovery College. So, unlike all the speeches in previous years, I've never heard a head boy speech. So obviously, I needed some help writing it. And I went to the man who's put aside a lot of time for me over my two years here. He's helped me academically and helped me as a friend, Mr. Rogers. He gave me a list of all the things I could mention. So here goes. The first thing on the list was to talk about your journey. 
This could be taken metaphorically or literally. So I took it literally. My first ever journey down to this small town in South Wales began when I left my house with my mum and dad for the scholarship day in November 2019. Five minutes down the road, on the roundabout, before we got onto the motorway, my mum and dad looked back and asked, Alfie, what's wrong with you? And for the boys who have lived with me for two years know that there's always something wrong with me. I answered, because I don't want to go. That was because I was scared of not being good enough, scared of not liking it, scared of being away from home, scared of facing new opportunities, and also, it's a very long drive, especially when you're car sick. My parents said, it's up to you, but there's no harm in looking, and if you don't like it, we'll never come back. So we hopped onto the motorway, and three and a half hours later, we arrived in Flandovery, a name I still struggle to pronounce properly. When we turned into the main gates, I was scared to death, but intrigued into what it was all about. So I completed the scholarship day and went home that night, overwhelmed and excited to start a new chapter in my life at a place like this. A place that extends the meaning of the word family past blood relation. A place that you can better yourself in every way possible with a positive attitude. But if I hadn't have been persuaded to come and have a look by my parents on that roundabout, it's crazy how different my life would have been. I'm sure I'm not the only one to have had a, di to have had a similar experience to this. So, carrying on the list Mr Rogers gave me, it was to talk about memorable moments. And living in a house with 20 boys for two years, there's lots of memorable moments. Some, or many, which wouldn't be appropriate to talk about in front of parents. So here's a few which I can share. We have open mic night, where we saw boys dressed in skirts. Myself and Harry singing a duet to Bruno Mars. And one boy dressed as Shrek. We had some amazing musical performances from the likes of Ella, Alex and Archie. During the Estedvod, when someone had the wise idea to throw all the English boys on the stage to sing a song. And as you probably guessed, this song was all in Welsh. For the first ever game for college in pre-season, when we finished the game, we made a tunnel and clapped the opposition through, as normal. And down the middle ran Di Butler. This was just before one of the older boys tripped him up and left his nose running with blood. <laughs> in all seriousness, Di does a lot for the college and for me. Whether it's making a coffee in the day or driving boys to the other ends of the country, I'd like to thank Di for everything he does for the college. Third on the list is how the college has changed me. In my time away from home, I've matured, became more confident, started to believe myself, and learned a thing or two in the kitchen. I've met some lifelong friends, which I'm sure will play a big part in my future. On the rugby pitch, I've developed into a much better player, and in the classroom, I've definitely outperformed where I thought I ever could have gone. This was down to the teaching and coaching here at Flandovery College. The college has taught me to appreciate culture, your surroundings, and the people close to you. As well as this, I've learned that at the slightest bit of sunshine, put on your shorts, vest, bring a ball and a speaker, and lap up the sunshine, because it isn't around a lot. Which brings me on to the next point on the list, the thank yous. Firstly, I would like to thank my teachers and all the teachers at the college. They have guided, persuaded, pushed, stretched and nagged all of us. I'd like to thank board and staff, as they put up with us all, when I'm sure they have much better things to be doing. But also for waking us up at 6.30 in the morning for room inspections. We all really thank you for that. Seriously though, they do a great job and it's much appreciated amongst the boys. I'd like to thank Miss Flowers for being a great teacher to myself, but also with the help outside of school, getting us all ready for our next destinations in life. The warden deserves a big thank you for all his effort he put into the college and also having time to talk to anyone in the morning, whether that be in the queue or as we're leaving. And lastly, I would like to thank my own parents as without them, this journey that I've been on over my two years would not be possible. Whether that's from driving me seven hours back to college after a Sunday after I play for my rugby club, or whether that's just been a phone call away whenever I need them. So thank you. As a sport-crazy college, this is possibly the worst outcome for us in our final year here. But we have kept our heads up, trained hard, and whenever we could, got on, to, got with, got on with everything thrown our way. So well done. We are talented, smart, dedicated, and a positive group of people. And these qualities, I'm sure, will take us far in life. So I wish everyone the best that life can offer. Thank you, Thandovery, for two incredible years, and good luck to everyone this summer and beyond. Thank you. Well done, Alfie. And now I'd like to invite Catherine Fear to come up and give us her talk. Good evening. 
As most Leavers speeches do, I'd like to start by telling you a really quick story about my very first day at Llandevery. I was four years old, it was the end of August, and my parents had brought me to Llandevery to pick up my new school uniform. We'd visited the school once already, and since then I'd been full of questions about how it all worked and everything I'd get to do. I remember we walked into the concourse and threw into the school shop, where we were greeted by a friendly face that we've all come to know and love. Ina was busy serving a year 13 boy, who was buying some uniform for his final year at college. To me, this boy seemed like he'd come straight out of a storybook. He towered above my dad, and his red hair seemed to be flowing in the wind. Ina came over to us and made a joke that one day, I'd be that big too. And although I know she meant it only metaphorically, I am a little bit disappointed I never actually got to be that tall. The moment has been mentioned many times during my family as I've moved up to school, so it's stuck with me. But until a little while ago, I didn't think anything else of it. However, at the end of year 11, I had the opportunity to play at Roslyn Park with the girls' rugby team. And every year, the night before the girls play, we all go to the London Welsh Club and have a meal with some of the old boys. That meal was one of my favourite times at Llandivery. There were talking, there was conversations, there was even a singing element from all the newest players, uh, which was interesting. Um, and throughout the meal, I was sat next to a gentleman with tall, who was tall with red hair. And he was telling me about some incredible life experiences he had had uh, in his time after Llandivery. We worked out that his last year in college and my first year in college would have coincided, but we didn't think much more of it at the time. A few days later, sadly after I'd forgotten his name, I realised that the gentleman I'd been sat next to was the same man that had been in Ina's shop all those years ago. Despite having been on so many journeys in his time after school, he still managed to be involved in college events, and although the story doesn't have the most thrilling plotline, to me it really sums up the community that is here at Llandivery. It gives me reassurance that we never really have to leave completely. Everyone has their own little piece of the Llandivery community, and to me, that's what makes it so special. This year's been a weird one. There's no way to avoid saying it. A personal favourite moment for me was when Alfie forgot how the mute button worked um, and accidentally serenaded our math class with a beautiful rendition of a strong by the script. Um, and we've also all got to know our teachers a bit better. Uh, seeing the inside of someone else's home really connects you to them on a whole new level. In all seriousness, though, we owe a massive thank you to all the staff who worked so hard to keep us going throughout the lockdowns and get us back into school as soon as possible. Through spending such a long time at Llandivery, there are many people I'd love to thank. However, there are three thank yous I really want to say now. The first is to Miss Flowers. Uh, I can't see you. There you go. <laughs> um, from teaching me how to hold a hockey stick the right way up to supporting through my uni application process, Miss, you've been there every step of the way. Your energy and positivity is so contagious, and although your 9am Zoom fitness sessions were a little bit much for me in the pandemic, uh, they were still a massive source of entertainment, so thank you very much, Miss. Another man who's played a big role in my time here at Llandevery is Mr. Di James. You found opportunities to do activities I would never have dreamed of doing and provided me with so much support both inside and out of the CCF. I'm really going to miss your larger than life personality and I really hope we can keep in touch. Finally, I'd like to thank my parents. Thank you so, so much for all the sacrifices you've made to keep me here and for all your support you've allowed me to, uh, for all your support that's allowed me to experience so many opportunities throughout my journey. You both mean the world to me and I can't thank you enough. Finally, I'd like to wish a massive good luck to all of Year 13. Although it's sad that the first chapter of our lives is coming to a close without the ending we were hoping for, there's so much we can look forward to in the future. They say, once you're part of Llandivery, you never really leave. And whether it's visiting to watch matches or attending old Llandivarian events, we'll be back. Thank you, Katie. That was lovely. And now I'd like to invite the warden to come and give his address. Students, colleagues, parents, guests, thank you all for attending this evening's leading service. Tonight is an event we're able to celebrate our achievements of our outstanding senior students before, as you've heard, they go off tomorrow into the next stages of their lives. Parents, staff and guests who, due to COVID-19 restrictions, are unable to be here in person, we miss you. We've missed you throughout the time, but we are delighted that you can join us this evening via our live stream. And also, we welcome our guest, Father Tim and we are delighted that he could come back and share some thoughts with you, who, as he himself is a lever this year. 
Tonight in the audience, we have students, we have staff, we have some proud parents on camera and guests, many of whom have had a long association with Glandovery College and all who have played their part in the growth and development of our wonderful college over the past few years. All of you, each and every one of you today, have played your part in building the growing reputation of the college. And I, as current warden, would like to echo my thanks to each and every one of you who have supported the college every step of the way. A couple of months ago, I was encouraged to, by a fellow head to watch a truly inspirational graduation speech, which was given by a gentleman called Professor Jim Ryan, who is the Dean of Harvard Graduate, Graduate School of Education. He's an incredible chap. The, the speech has been viewed thousands and thousands of times. And in that speech, he posed various questions that we should be asking ourselves. And he gave a lot of life advice. But the one piece of advice that he stuck to all the way through was the very clear message that the power of listening was key to going forward. It is really easy in our day-to-day -day lives just to listen to each other without really hearing. I'm sure we've all switched off until we assume that the best bit is coming, or that we're fed up when we listen to politicians failing to answer the questions that are asked. And I'm sure there are some already here that have already switched off this evening. Indeed, my wife Sarah often reminds me that I have two ears and one mouth, and that listening is a skill that I sometimes forget. So this evening I'm going to be brief, students, so that you can get to the informal part and probably the more enjoyable part of this evening's celebrations. Tomorrow, 3.30, you become OLs. The Society is an organisation that you've already heard elements of that is there to offer you support. It has contacts that you will use throughout your future time and careers. Yesin Thomas, who leads the association, I know is extremely keen to ensure that you connect as a, an outgoing year group to ensure no matter where you go to university or the world of work, as it guarantees you personal contacts that can open up many doors for you going forward. And as you make that step, to the next stages of your lives, ensure, and I'm sure you will, that you take with you the college values that you've often heard in this chapel. Compassion. Again, we do not need reminding that this needs to be shown, especially in the context of our last 12 months or so. Courage. And I have no doubt that each and every one of you has that in abundance the resilience that will be needed to tackle future challenges. You will fail at times. You will learn some hard lessons. But in rejection and failure, with that courage that you now have, I'm sure you're going to bounce back even harder. Humility. Be modest in your successes and be selfless in how you share these with others, is what it says on our college values. You have seen much success, but remember, in every success, there are others that have not. Respect. For me, it's simple. It's simple that you should treat others as you leave this college as you would want them to treat you. And finally, integrity. Be honest with yourselves. Conduct your life with decency and ensure that you strive for the highest moral standards. Now, take a look at the blazers that you are wearing. Look at the badges, the scholarships, the colours, the leadership badges, and think of the opportunities and much, much more that the college has brought you. You should all be very proud in what you have achieved. And in August, I'm sure, will bring even greater achievements. And sitting here in front of us are going to be future leaders of both college country and many other elements. Just a little bit like Alfie in his speech, a few weeks ago I asked the student, you the students in year 13 about some predictions 
of who was going to be the next future Prime Minister. I'm not really convinced I'm going to share the results of that poll with you today, parents and students. The boys and girls will share that with you. In fact, he's laughing now. But all of you have aspirations. All of you have dreams. And I'm sure something that the college will have taught you is that aim high and you will succeed. When I was at school, and no, that wasn't a few years ago, it was many, people used to say, school life are the best years of your life. It's true. The problem is you just don't know it. But when you take time in years to come, and that may be many, many years, and you reflect on what you've heard this evening and the stories of the boarding houses or the school trips, the tours, I'm sure at that point you will agree that your school years at the college certainly were some of the best. However, and it's been said already and I'm going to add to that, such years would not have been the same without a group of staff many of them who are here tonight and unfortunately many that were not able to attend, who have helped and guided you throughout the past few years. And I'm sure, students, that you'd wish to join me in thanking each and every one of them, house staff, teaching staff, sixth form staff, led by Miss Flowers and her team of tutors. Students, let's give our, our staff a round of applause. Thank you. Now, as you've heard, we have some students, we have three students here at the college that have been here a little longer than most. And these students are given the wonderful title of lifers. It's not a prison, although when I joined the college and was informed that my title was going to be warden and not headmaster, I had to think and wonder. However, we have three students that have spent many, many years with us. And I would like to ask Katie Fear, Katie Davis and William Charles Davis to come forward and collect their Lifers Award. Please come forward. In August, you will gain your academic achievements. And I'm sure and hope that you believe we are predicting you some quality grades across the board. And we are confident that your academic achievements that will come to us in August will again add to the growing reputation of the college that you leave behind. Again, I asked you all two weeks ago in assembly about your best moments at the college and again, your aspirations. As I've said, I can't share some of those best moments as they involve things that maybe I shouldn't have heard. But most of those revolved around sporting highlights, pride in representing your college, incredible school trips, wonderful tours, times in boarding, and many, many other moments. Your aspirations that we discussed were rightly bold and we look forward to seeing how many of you go forward and fulfil those dreams. We've heard two wonderful speeches from our head boy and head girl, Alfie and Katie, and you two with your team have led the student body in what has certainly been a very difficult and strange year. Katie, we are so proud of your scholarship award from the Moorhead Kane Foundation and we wish you all the very best in what is going to be an exciting next few years. I'm delighted that we have had sent through Katie's scholarship certificate. And I also have a small gift for her in her term of office as head girl. I would ask Katie to please come forward. Alfie, you've been an outstanding young man and a role model for all. 
Every tour that is carried out with prospective parents, they return to the library and they mention the, these words time and time again. I'd like my son to turn out like that lad. Alfie, you've always had a smile on your face. In fact, I can never remember a time when you haven't. You've been an outstanding role model for all of our student body. I wish you well on the seven hour journey back home when you make it. Please come up and receive a small gift for me. I'm delighted to also add a few other congratulations. And the first goes to our first 15 captain, Archie Hughes, who has been offered a contract with Scarlets for the next three years. I'm so pleased, uh, Archie, for you, especially in what has been, as we all know, boys and girls, the most frustrating sporting season that we'll ever incur. And we un also understand that over the next few weeks, even more offers of potential contracts May, may be made, and we wish all the very best to those boys. As has been said, COVID-19 has impacted on you as a group and as a bunch of individuals. I am hugely proud of how you have dealt with the situation, with the disappointment, with the lack of matches during your last two lockdown periods. Your year group will always be associated with a new language, it's not Welsh. Face masks, sanitizer, vaccines, and many, many weird and wonderful words and concepts like social distancing. Students, do not let it shape you. See it as a temporary period from which you will all come through much, much stronger. I will personally always remember you as a year group and individuals who, many of you of whom, joined the college with me back in September 19. You have shown me just how much passion you have for this incredible school. I will always be thankful for the welcome and support you have given me as warden over the past two years. Who could have imagined that the path that we have all trod together would have joined us or would have taken us to a path where we had to ask permission to hug our loved ones? where drinking beer and singing was banned from Welsh life. It will return. So the words that I will associate with your year group are pretty simple. Quality, personality, talent, passion, and much, much more. Year 13s, as you are now moving on from Clandovery, I want to leave you with a few words and some borrowed words from others. Michael Josephin was very clear. He said, take pride in how far you have come. Have faith in how far you can go. But don't forget to enjoy the journey. And from where I'm standing, each and every one of you has done that over the last few years. And Mark Twain spoke 20 years from now you will be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than the ones that you did so throw off the bowlines sail away from the safe harbor of the college go catch those winds in your sails and explore dream and discover and again i'm sure each and every one of you will do exactly that and finally, in the words of Dr. Zeus, Year 13s, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself in any direction you choose. Students, go forward with confidence and know that there will always be a home here waiting for you on your return. Year 13s, I shall miss you all. Please don't be strangers. Deal. Thank you, Warden. And now I'd like to invite Mr. Tom Jones to come up and read us a story.
Thank you for inviting me, first of all, to speak. I heard this dervish story many years ago. Uh, the dervish are people from Africa. And they are people that told stories at gatherings which held deep meanings for people to ponder. Listen carefully and consider the following story. I won't ask you to share your thoughts, but maybe share them with me a little bit later. The Nat Namus and the Elephant. Once upon a time there was a gnat. His name was Namus, and he was known because of his sensitivity as perceptive Namus. Namus decided after reflection upon his state and for good and sufficient reasons to move house, the place which he chose as eminently suitable was the ear of a certain elephant. All that remained it to do was to make the move. And quite soon, the moose had installed himself in the large and highly attractive quarters. Time passed. The gnat reared several family of gnatlets, and he sent them out into the world. As the years rolled past, he knew the usual moments of tension and relaxation, the feelings of joy and sorrow, of questing and achievement, which are the lot of the gnat wherever he may be found. The elephant's ear was his home, and as is always the case, he felt that there was a close connection between his life, his history, his very being, and this place. The ear was so warm, so welcoming, so vast, the scene of so many experiences. Naturally, Namus had not moved into the house without due ceremony and a regard for the proper observances of the situation. On the very first day, just before moving in, he cried at the top of his voice his decision. O oh, elephant, he shouted, Know that none other than I, Namus the Nat, known as Perceptive Namus, propose to make this place my abode. As it is your ear, I'm giving you the customary notice of my intention. The elephant raised no objection. But Namus did not know that the elephant had not heard him at all. Neither for that matter had the host felt the entry or even the presence and absence of the gnat and his various families. Not to labour the point unduly, he had no idea that the gnats were there at all. And when the time came for Namus the perceptive to leave for what were him compelling and important reasons, he reflected that he must do so in accordance with established and hallowed custom. He prepared himself for the formal declaration of his abandonment of the elephant's ear. Thus it was the decision finally taken and his words sufficiently rehearsed, Namu sh shouted once more down the elephant's ear. He shouted once and no answer came. He shouted again and the elephant was still silent. The third time gathering the whole strength of his voice to register his urgent yet eloquent words. He cried, O elephant, know that I, the gnat, perceptive Namus, propose to leave my hearth and home to quit my residence in this ear of yours where I have dwelt for so very long. And this is for sufficient and significant reason which I am prepared to explain to you. Now finally the words of the gnat came to the hearing of the elephant and the gnat cry penetrated as the elephant pondered the words. Namus shouted, what have you to say in answer to my news? What are your feelings about my departure? The elephant raised his great head and trumpeted a little and this trumpeting contained the sense Go in peace, for in truth your going is of as much interest and significance to me as was your coming. The story has made me wonder, 
for a number of years when I first heard it as a sixth form student. I can only conclude on the following at this time. The world could be the elephant. It may not acknowledge you unless you make yourself heard. Or are we the elephant, simply unaware of the toil and industry of others, however small? Do we need to look with better eyes and listen with open ears, picking up on the smallest of things? If we take ourselves to be the gnat, the sept of namus, however, however insignificant we believe ourselves to be, we have a voice. We need to carry ourselves well, be considerate, confident, and communicate, building a balanced life, a family, and a good legacy in this world as a process. Thank you. Well, I'm sure you'll all be able to have a natter with Mr. Jones later about that. And for now, we're going to listen to Archie Hughes and Alex Carson, who are going to sing two songs to us. The first one is called Good Riddance, and the second one is called Green Day. And it's just one song. Thank you very much, Archie and Alex, and I'm glad that you corrected me. It was one song. <laughs> there we are. Now we come to the close of this 
year 13 Leavers service and I've got a couple of prayers and one blessing to give you. So let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for the life that you have given to us. We thank you for all the gifts. We thank you for the sun that shines and the rain that causes the plants to grow. We thank you for this college and for the education on so many different levels that these young people have received. We thank you, Lord, for all your goodness to us. Amen. And then this prayer, which may be familiar to some of you, but I'd like to read it to you and hope that you'll take it with you. It's the words of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying to the self that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Heavenly Father, would you please watch over each one here. We pray especially for our pupils who are being sent out into the world. Lord, may they know your security and your peace. And so finally, each one of you, may God surround you and hedge you in with his love and his care. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Year 13. I think as you go, we're going to listen to Callan Lan, but we're going to give you a clap, a round of applause for our Year 13s. <laughs>